No, there's, is there face validity to the data? Is there no, a representative sample should have a roughly equal amount of males and females in there because that's how we are distributed across society. If it's not, there's something wrong with the sampling, with the data, face validity, or with the measurement, although in that case, bad example. Um, content validity, does the item measure what you're trying to measure? Um, relating back to theory, to definitions, to conceptualizations of early studies, for instance, is, is um, something which is often done here. So do I measure, does my measure work in a similar way or does it look similarly than other measures that others have used? Does it really translate theoretical concepts into empirical measurement? Again, very hard to do in a, in a, in a systematic way. Criterion validity, um, does my variable behave the way it should behave? For instance, we know that um, there's a relationship between income and education. If in our data we don't find that relationship, it's either a very strange case, or there's something wrong with the measurement of either of the two. Yeah? So I can use this empirically to test the behavior of my measures uh, and compare that to what they should be. Um, when we talk about experiments, we talk much more about internal and external validity. To what extent are the claims that I'm making true within the realm of the study? And to what extent do the claims that I make based on my study travel to, to the broader population, to the outside world, to reality? Again, that's something new. Um, I'm jumping this, <coughs> I'm jumping this for reasons of time, and I'm also jumping this, reliability, obviously, and stability, and there was a nice example here. <coughs> but we're not going to have a break, but I wanted you to talk a bit more, and, and I'm not quite sure how we handle these tutorial sessions, but we'll give it a try now. And um, what, I, I've got two or three more slides I want to show you, but what I'd like you to do is then come together in groups, get around the room, and there's more space here, and um, and find yourself also in groups, because those groups ideally should stay together for the next uh, for the next five days. And um, today I want you to start about start thinking about what is what is what is what is my research question? I'll come up with two or three research questions that you all find interesting. Try to formulate a research question that is a proper, shows a proper formulation for a quantitative research project. Try to think about what challenges you see in terms of maybe even <coughs> validity, reliability, in terms of measurement, in terms of translating that research question into data. Is, is it easy to do? Is it hard to do? Um, things like that. And I know we're a bit short in time today. Maybe we can go into two today at least, if that's fine with yeah. you. Yeah, doing a quarter of an hour longer than, than we had initially planned, but that's good. Um, because that would give you some, you know, at least 30 minutes to, in the groups, discuss this a little bit. Um, again, this is the first tutorial session, and ideally, um, towards the end, you, you have all the things that you discuss in the tutorial in one presentation. So maybe the idea today could also be if you settle in the groups on one or two research questions that you all find interesting to say, okay, so these are the questions I'm going to reflect tomorrow about in terms of ethics. That's, that's the questions which I try to stick uh, the experimental design to on, on Thursday. That's the questions which I um, think about survey questionnaire design on, on Wednesday, you know? So to, to try to maybe find a question that you can drag through the next couple of days and always come back to when we talk about the different um, things that we want to talk about. So that's the idea. I'm going to talk for two more minutes and then we break up into groups and you try to figure out how to find yourself in groups and, um, and we'll take it from there. And I'll be running around the room and um, seeing how things are going and trying to keep advice. Um, Again, the choice of method depends on the question that one seeks to answer. Um, we know very little about complex issues, then we'd rather go qualitative. So since this is a course of quantitative design, maybe try to think about questions where you 
would be able to formulate expectations where you would think this. There is already some knowledge generated, but we need to add to that knowledge um, that, that would be maybe more appropriate. There's different types of research questions you could think of, and I'll put this slide on again so when, when you do your group discussions. So you could think about predicting outcomes. Does Y happen under circumstances of A and B? You can explain causes and consequences of phenomenon. Is Y affected by X or is Y a consequence of X? To evaluate the phenomenon, does Y exhibit the benefits that it's claimed that it's claimed to have? You know, is there these will be distributions in the population, for instance? Um, Describing a phenomenon, what is Y like, what forms does Y assume, developing good practice, how we can, can we improve Y, empowerment, how can we enhance the lives of those we, those we research, comparisons to A and B different respects of X, for instance. Um, there are still some descriptive questions in here. I, I would ideally like you to come to some sort of question which is explanatory rather than purely descriptive. And I'm also telling you why. Because in many areas of the social sciences, it is very hard to nowadays publish descriptive accounts in a quantitative manner. You know, in a theory testing, quantitative design, um, the publications of purely descriptive findings of frequency distributions, of means, uh, of certain things, is becoming increasingly difficult, and that certainly goes for my field. So that certainly goes for political science, for communication science, but maybe also would travel to other fields. So in that sense, the descriptive research is often, at least from my perspective, when we already know some things about how, how things work, it's a bit boring. When it's exploring things that we don't know anything about, it's interesting. Let me illustrate, you're doing the Indian election study. You're not the ones, you're not the pollsters who published polls in the week before the election, which is descriptive information and interesting to the general public. You can't publish those polls in an academic article. That's not interesting. Or not interesting enough, not teaching us enough about theory, not solving any problems really. And that's where we again get into this, this idea of, you know, we want to we wanna address problems, we want to address, and we want to explain social realities rather than only describe social realities. And if you work quantitatively, I think that's, that's an important aspect to consider, that explanatory research being able to say X causes Y, if A then B. Um, and that could be very simple, you know? That doesn't have to be rocket science. That could be the fact that newspaper A covers political party B differently from newspaper C. So the newspaper explains differences in party coverage, for instance. Could be a simple cross tab in that sense. But it's relating two variables to each other, rather than just describing one way. And that's at least my experience also in publications. It's, it's in the fields I'm working in, it's, it's impossible, it's almost impossible to publish purely descriptive accounts of, of data. At least in the good terms. Um, again, different types of questions. I'm jumping, in the interest of time, this piece on causality. Look at it at home, I sent you the slides. It's just since we do want to work on explaining reality and not just describing social reality, it's important to consider what causality actually is. But this is very common sense, I think if you just browse through it, um, it's for now is fine. So I've been thinking about, if, if you try to, and, and I'll let you do this, and I'm not going to split up the groups myself, and if you try to find yourself in groups of six to eight in different areas of this room, or maybe even outside of the room, and there's a little area, I think, where, where you guys could sit, um, and, and try to find yourself in a group that you see yourself working in for the next 
four and a half days. Um, that would be very much appreciated. Then, then I'd like you to come to formulating an example of a social science research question which you think is interesting. That could come from your own research, right? Ideally it does, at least from one of the group's own research. Um, maybe come up with two different ones if you, if you like. Discuss the appropriateness of quantitative approaches um, to answer those research questions and the possible challenges in doing so. And maybe you've already thought about that in your own area of research. Try to make it a bit more systematic maybe. And maybe think about, can I validly and reliably measure what I want to measure, what I need to measure in terms of answering the research question? Um, and feed that maybe on a slide or two or three into the final presentation that um, you'll be holding on the final day. So if one of the group could take notes today and, and make sure that, you know, by the end of this course on Friday, there's a presentation which consists of 10, 12 slides, which looks into different things that we do in the tutorials, that would be very much appreciated. And if we have time today, we do a quick discussion of what you what you um, came up with, the, the problems, challenges that were identified within the groups. Um, I'll be walking around and, and listening in to the discussions in the different groups and try to give feedback here and there. Um, that's, that's the idea I have today. We do different things with the tutorials, but today that's, that's what we try. So, um, spin off, <laughs> start. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to do it. I think it's easier if you try to find yourself. And, and, um, but make sure that we've got six to eight people in the groups, otherwise we have too many groups to present on the final day. Listen in here and there, give some advice here and there. I think some, some of the groups are, are doing very interesting, are coming up with very interesting ideas, or most of the groups actually are. Not all. Uh, are coming with, up with very interesting ideas, um, and and maybe you also want to take what, take these discussions outside of the classroom now. Maybe you want to continue for for a little bit. I don't know whether it's possible here or outside somewhere on campus. Um, just two remarks again. I think one is make sure that you you're trying to get beyond the descriptive, purely descriptive research question. Because I felt that in many groups, that, that's basically the starting point, right? You're, you're interested in describing something that's out there. And ideally, you can move one step beyond and say, I want to explain by certain factors what's out there. And that doesn't have to be super, super difficult. I mean, you know, some of you doing content analysis things. I mean, the easiest things that we always do in content analysis is say that we expect differences between newspapers. So the kind of newspaper would determine the coverage of the party in this case, for instance, which would be an explanation, right? That's it, as easy as it gets into, in terms of moving into an explanatory account. Time could be an issue. I expect changes over time. So time is the independent variable which is influencing the dependent variable. You know? Again, we're in an explanatory question, not in a purely descriptive one. That's, that's the one thing I think um, which is important to, to take away when we continue maybe this discussion a little bit. The other one is um, consider how you can translate your concepts and your research questions into numbers. And some of you were much more concrete in their research questions already than others. And you know, I, I think, I'm not even sure whether you stuck to it, but you talked about democracy, perceptions of democracy. Yeah, I know. But democracy is a huge concept, right? What aspects of democracy, how, what understanding of democracy do we actually, are we interested in? How can we measure this? And you guys in the beginning talked about identity. Yeah, very interesting. Um, but again, as I told you, there's libraries written about identity. So what aspects of identity are, am I interested in? How can I actually measure, can I actually, and how can I measure that aspect? That's things that Ideally, you take a bit further into the discussions. Yeah. Uh, we have a question in our group. We're trying to measure the uh, perception of winnability of their candidate. Um, so, should it be a question of yes and no? Do you think your candidate is winning, or should it be a question on scale, whether? Yeah. Um, ideally, what we want to realize in quantitative research is variation, because variation, and we'll come to that at a later point is very useful for statistical operations. Yeah. So yes, no, there's always much less variation than on a scale from 0 to 10, for instance. Yeah. 
um, also might make the measurement more precise, but that's something to be discussed in, in deep, right? So, so do you need more than a yes, no, and why do you need more than a yes, no? Again, ideally, <coughs> when, when we listen to your presentations, maybe also in a couple of days, and, and I listen in again at, at some point, ideally you can motivate every decision that you took. And if you take the decision to make it a yes, no thing, then tell me why you did so. And if you can't, it's an arbitrary decision, and it's not a good decision anymore. So try to motivate everything that you're doing in, in this in this step um, in terms of devising research questions, but especially also translating research questions into measurement. The advantage is that it's more reliable because it's yes and no, so you can always be sure that you're getting a clear answer. It's, in, it's interesting that you call it more reliable because we know from we, we can we know from from content analysis work and again we do that on day five I think we know that the reliability to, to get reliable data is much harder for yes no questions than for uh, scale questions for instance so it's, it's you know <coughs> but yeah but if you come with these arguments that at least shows you know we try to think about what we're doing here and that's I think. Um, one of the things that you should take away from, from today's lecture. I mean, position yourself in what you're interested in, reflect on what you're interested in, position yourself in the quote quant thing, and then try to think about quantification and, and how quantification works in the context of a research question. That's, that's I think, the major things. So it's um, 2 o'clock today, which means we'll, we'll call it a day for today. Um, try to make sure that if you say we're done with discussing that someone took note and maybe chucks them into a, a PowerPoint presentation, first two or three slides. Um, maybe if you say we, we want to discuss a bit further, grab a coffee somewhere and continue the discussion. Um, but my sense was that I heard some interesting discussions actually and some interesting questions and I'm looking forward to get a bit more feedback than tomorrow probably already on, on your plans. Yeah. And tomorrow we'll be starting at 10 o'clock again, right? And talk um, in, the, in the morning a bit about sampling and sampling strategies and sampling theory and the, the magic of sampling. And some of you know the statistics, know more about that, but um, it's, it's quite magical that sampling, random sampling, um, is works, works as a technique. Um, I think. And then we have a tutorial again where we we, we will talk about sampling and drawing samples in light of the research questions that we discussed today. What type of samples are appropriate and what should I be looking at? How can I get at those samples is something um, which I'd like to do then tomorrow. And then after that we talk about uh, something which I find personally very important about research ethics. Um, it's something which we see is increasingly important in, in the international publication scene. So journals asking about ethical clearance for projects um, when it comes to the pro design experiments is a huge issue when it comes to ethics but also ethics in terms of how do you deal with your data how do you do your analyses and um, that's some of the things I want to cover tomorrow in the afternoon with that um, thanks for today and have a, have a good afternoon see you tomorrow